out to all the veterans and families of veterans. We didn't get to be with you yesterday on Veterans Day, so we have a celebration today. Thanks, I think, Brother Ray, whoever helped him, probably Sister Barbara, and uh, probably Kevin. Praise God. I'm just so thankful for what God's doing in our land and in our midst. And he is a mighty God and a holy God. So let's all stand and go to him this morning in prayer. Welcome him into our service this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you that we are a people of your presence. And that, Father, where two or three are gathered together in your name, you're in the midst of us. And we ask you, Father, to be with us today. And everything that's said and done will be in honor of you and be pleasing to you. And we ask you, Father, that your presence fill this place, Father, and that you have your way in every area of our lives today. And we thank and praise you for this time, for the freedoms in this nation to worship you freely, Lord, and to have a voice, oh God, in the, the governments of our people. And we thank you, Father, for all of the wonderful, wonderful blessings you poured out on our nation. And Father, we thank you for putting a quietness, Lord, to the evil that would have come to our nation without you. And we thank you that you are Lord of all, and you are our King and our God. And we bless you this morning in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, uh, welcome everybody. You can be seated. Uh, I think I think I need this little paper here telling me where to go from here. <laughs> Praise God. Pastor is uh, on a mission in San Francisco this morning, and he will be home this evening. But uh, he he left us an order of service, and he he's praying for us. I know we're praying for him for a safe journey home. And uh, I thank the Lord for his goodness. Yes. So, uh, let's do our call to worship that Brother Ray wrote for us. It's a beautiful call to worship, and I think I need somebody else to come and lead it. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. Okay. You also look a look so chipper this morning. That's wonderful. Okay, come let us worship the Lord all together here today. Let us worship the Lord in His presence as we pray. He'll be there to receive you and His presence you'll enjoy. Be
to our family, friends, and neighbors on the 19th, which is next Sunday. Okay, so hand these out to people and invite them to come next Sunday and join us for a time of fun. Okay, and Pastor Tim is requesting a Daniel type fast. Ask the Holy Spirit what he'd have you to fast up until that day. Invite your saved, unsaved loved ones to join us. And see Sister Marcy if you would like to uh, help with food. If uh, she hasn't already talked to you, she may have. All right. Okay. And then um, Sunday mornings we have Sunday school at 9:30. It's open to everybody. Come on out, you guys. We're having a good time. And um, we're studying the Parsha. What Pastor Vonda reads. The snippet for us every week, we're studying it further on Sunday mornings. And um, that's at 9.30. Church starts at 10.30. And um, Tuesdays, we have prayer at 6. And that is also open to everyone. Please come out and join us. I'm challenging you guys, at least come out once a month. Come on. Can't you, you know, what does it take? You need a ride, call somebody. Um, Marcy comes pretty regular. Ruthie and I come. Pastor John is already here. Resident <laughs> 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 prayer warrior. Amen. So, um, but if you need a ride, call somebody. Ask somebody to bring you. Because we want you guys to come out every, you know, once a month. Okay? And it, that's at six. Then it's, and um, in December, or is it January, we're starting community prayer. Okay. I think it's January. Okay. All right. We'll hold off on that. All right. Um, thank you, Pastor John. So then at seven we have our Bible study, and we're studying uh, Game Changers by Graham Cook, which is a phenomenal teaching. We're really enjoying that. Wednesday at one fifteen we have uh, by divine appointment, written by Dr. Noreen Jacks, and that's on the feasts. So we're really learning about the feast on Wednesdays, and that's at 1.15. And both classes are open to anybody that wants to come. Um, it's, they're both really enjoyable classes, so if you're interested, come on out. And Saturdays at 2, Paul is teaching the Teshuva Israel. And that's by Paul Sch Schlenbolt. He'll forgive me if I didn't say that right. <laughs> He's leading us in a Parsha study on Saturdays, at, and that starts at 2. Let's see. Oh, in our Bible study time on Wednesday is changing to 1.30. I forgot about that. Um, it works better for Pastor. So next Sunday is our friends and family, and then save the date for December 16th, because that's going to be on a Saturday. <coughs> for our annual Hanukkah party from 10.30 to 2, give or take. There will be latkes to eat, games to play, music, and much more. Also, um, the 18th is not in here. Is that still on? Yes. Well, it's, it's in there. It is for us. I see the 19th. I'm sorry. It's up no, I'm sorry. The 16th? At the 18th. <coughs> okay, well, the 18th, we're having, oh, there it is. Thank you, Marcy. <coughs> This Saturday, the 18th, our fellowship breakfast is going to be here at 10 o'clock. No, 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 this is 18th. Oh, Saturday, the 18th. Oh, okay. Third number down. Sorry. Okay. It's going to be here instead of at Brookfields. Don't go to, ladies, don't go to Brookfields, okay? It's going to be here at 10 o'clock. And again, Marcy is coordinating the food, so um, if you'd like to help with that, give her a call. And we're going to have a lot of fun. That starts, it's 10.30. This is 10. Mm -hmm. Okay, give or take. I guess maybe he couldn't make up his mind which one he wanted to start. <laughs> oh, it's a tough crowd today. Okay, praise the Lord, everybody. I knew I was missing something. <laughs> okay, your prayer requests are inside. Pray for Damien Hobbs, Mary Lou's grandson. He's still recovering. Continue to pray for Bob and Darlene. They're facing many challenges, health challenges. 
Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for our missionaries in Pakistan with the orphanage. They only get fed every other day when they have the money. We need to um, pray that money in. Amen. Pray for Margaret and Joe Pesca, who have not been able to come to church for a long time due to their poor health. Pray for our church to be in unity of spirit and for our church to reach the lost with the love of Christ. This um, flyer is a way to do that. Invite people that aren't saved for next Sunday. Amen? <coughs> um, pray for, there's a photo here of a gentleman with the mask on. He is Special Ops 1 Keaton Brosher Seal, Team 3. Son-in-law of Pastor Hinkle's childhood friend, who was deployed in the Middle East and was hit by a rocket. He is currently in Germany and has his treatment plan has been in transition. So he needs prayer, okay, to uh, for healing for the doctors to know what to do to bring him back to fullness of life. Um, he is special ops, and that's why he's wearing a mask so nobody can see his face. So... But he's a special guy, right? Special law, special guys. Amen? On the back, you can write a list of people you want to invite so you don't forget as the Lord brings them to your mind. Amen? All right, everybody, have a good week, and we'll see you during the week, either Tuesday night, Wednesday afternoon, or Saturday morning. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Uh, this morning we have a little change up in worship. Our worship team had to be away this morning, except for our, the rest of our victory worship team. <laughs> but the smaller part of our worship team had to be away this morning for a special occasion. So um, Sister Barbara has generously agreed to come and lead us in worship this morning. And everybody can back her up really good because this is the first time we've asked her to do this <laughs> that I know of. Ray, they have had it so much since they have joined us here at the Tabernacle, and God has used them in so many ways, and I'm just so proud of you. We love you too. I love you so much. We love you. The pastor asked us to sing, so we put that together, and the song is No One Ever Cared for Me Like Jesus.
some uh, some uh, pictures going to be coming up on the screen with the words of the song, so they'll change real fast because they're with phrases. Uh, I wrote this song and I titled and I uh, copy wrote it this year, and it was to celebrate uh, the, the the veteran. And the title of the song is "The Soldier's Love." It has an orchestrational background too. <clears throat> So the pictures will change fast. A soldier's love for fellow man will later die on for a land. A parchment blood. collection from Picasso 
to write Raphael. They would often sit together and admire the great works of art. When the Vietnam conflict broke out, the son went to war. He was very courageous and died in battle while re rescuing another soldier. The father was notified and grieved deeply for his only son. About a month later, just before Christmas, there was a knock at the door. The young man stood at the door with a large package in his hands. He said, Sir, you don't know me, but I am the soldier for whom your son gave his life. He saved many lives that day, he w and he was carrying me to safety when a bullet struck him in the heart, and he died instantly. He often talked about you and your love for art. The young man held out this package. I know this isn't much. I'm not really a great artist, but I think your son would have wanted you to have this. The father opened the package. It was a portrait of his son, painted by the young man. He stared in awe at the way the soldier had captured the personality of his son in the painting. The father was so drawn to the eyes that his own eyes welled up with tears. He thanked the young man and offered to pay him for the picture. Oh no, sir, I could never repay what your son did for me as a gift. It's a gift. The father hung the portrait over his mantle. Every time visitors came to his home, he took them to see the portrait of his son before he showed them any of the other great works he had collected. The man died a few months later. There was to be a great auction of his paintings. Many influential people gathered, excited over seeing the great paintings and having an opportunity to purchase one of their collection. On the platform sat the painting of the sun. The auctioneer pounded his gavel. He will start the bidding with this picture of the sun. Who will bid for this picture? There was silence. Then a voice in the back of the room shouted, we want to see the famous paintings. Skip this one. But the auctioneer persisted. Will nobody bid for this painting? Who will start the bidding? 100, 200. Another voice angrily, we didn't come to see this painting. We came to see the famous paintings. Get on with the real bids. But still the auctioneer continued. The sun, the sun, yeah. who will take the sun? Finally a voice from the very back of the room. It was the longtime gardener of the man and his son. I'll give $10 for the painting. Being a poor man, it was all he could afford. We have $10. Who will bid 20? Give it to him for $10. Let's see the masters. The crowd was becoming angry. They didn't want the picture of the sun. They wanted the most, more worthy investments for their collections. The auctioneer pounded the gavel, going once, twice, sold for $10. A man sitting on the second row shouted, now let's get on with the collection. The auctioneer laid down his gavel. I'm sorry, the auction is over. What about the paintings? I am sorry. When I was called to conduct this auction, I was told of a secret stipulation in the will. It was not, I was not allowed to reveal that stipulation until this time. Only the painting of the sun will be auctioned. Whoever thought bought that painting would inherit the whole estate, including the paintings. The man who took the sun gets everything. God gave his son over 2,000 years ago to die on the cross. Much like the auctioneer, his message Today is the sun, the sun. Who will take the sun? Yeah. Because you see, whoever takes the sun gets everything. All right. All right. So give, and it will be given to you, pressed down, running over. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him will have eternal life.
That's love. Amen. You know that's a story, but it's very true, isn't it? Amen. We we sometimes tend to forget the value of our son and who died for us and who gave his life. Like just like many over the weekend we're celebrating or mourning for those that have fought for us in the military. I just thought that was an appropriate story to share Amen. this morning. Amen. Let's stand and let's pray. Lord God, thank you, Jesus. And let's thank the Lord thank you, for today. Father, I just thank you right now, Lord Jesus, for your almighty son that died for us on the cross. But the most wonderful thing, he rose again just for us. Lord, I ask that every person that gives this morning will give cheerfully. Give with their heart, Father, and help them to really realize the meaning of giving to you. It's not for us. It's, it's not for you. It's for us. And we just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing today. In Jesus' name, amen. Of the universe 
be moved to answer our entreaties. Yeshua told another parable about the power of persistent prayer. Thank you, Lord. He compared it to a man who needed to borrow food from, from his neighbor to feed an unexpected guest, but his neighbor had already gone to bed. The man continued to entreat his neighbor until the man eventually got out of bed and gave him what he needed. If persistent entreaty works on a lazy, reluctant neighbor, how much more so on God, who neither slumbers nor sleeps? Luke 11, 5 through 8. Yeshua encouraged us to pray persistently, saying, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Luke 11, 9. Rashi makes a second observ observation on the Hebrew wording of Genesis 25, 21. He notes that the Hebrew says that Isaac entreated the Lord opposite his wife. Rashi explains that Isaac stood in one corner and prayed, while Rebecca stood in the opposite corner and prayed. In other words, Isaac and Rebecca prayed together. The Lord heard the prayers of Isaac and Rebecca and answered by allowing Rebecca to conceive. Just as Sarah's conception of Isaac was a direct, miraculous intervention of God, so too with Rebecca. There is great power in the entreaties of a husband and a wife who commit to praying together. Amen. 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 So many things come to my mind when I was reading that, and so many the factual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And so we don't need that we don't ever want to neglect the high priesthood that God has given to us. It's our responsibility, but more than that, it's our privilege. We are so privileged that that veil was rent when Jesus died when he gave his blood. And that we have the privilege of going into the Holy of Holies yeah. through the blood of the Lamb. And we can seek the Father face to face. Because now we see through a glass darkly, of course. We can't see God and live. But he put Moses in that cleft of the rock and he covered right. him with his hand. And he saw his hundred parts. And we can have communion with God. We are restored to the Father because of Jesus and his blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you Father, for your precious blood. Uh, was there going to be a presentation with the flags? Uh, I don't know. I imagine so. Do, are we having a presentation with the flags that you brought, Brother Ray, before we turn it over to are we having? Are you having a special presentation? No, I don't know. It's during the song. Okay. Uh, I just wanted because sometimes you had them each uh, different service, Thank you, and so I didn't want to skip anything. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. Thank you. That was beautiful. Uh, praise God. Praise uh, once again, I want to give my heartfelt thanks to all the veterans who served and all those who have family members serving now and all of those who have given their lives through the years and, and their dedication to serving our country and, and protecting us and uh, from harm. I don't know, I'm so grateful. I'm an Air Force brat myself. Uh, special heartfelt. Yes, yeah. amen. So at this time, we're going to ask our pastor, God, to come. You know, it's so nice when Pastor Tim can go away and know that he's in very, he leaves the church and his sheep in capable hands are his sheep. They're God's sheep. Yes, amen. Amen. He always feels a responsibility, mm -hmm. and so he knows that when he leaves Pastor Johnny Watts in charge, yeah. everything's going to be okay, and God will have for you what he wants you to have today. So can you come, Pastor? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to his name. Yeah, we come to praise God because yeah. he's the only one that we can actually really give the praise to yeah. and thank him for all his many blessings that he has stowed upon us, not just us, but the soldiers that is in the army and those that has died for us. Um, so 
We thank God for all his blessings that he stowed upon us and the blessings he's going to store upon us. Because of him, we can make it. Yes, amen. Through him, all things is possible. Praise the Lord. And the topic for our subject today, the kingdom of God comes with power. And if we really realize this and really take it to heart, it does come with power. Amen. And through him, without him, we don't have no power. That's right. Through him, we have the power yes. to work for him. Yes. All right, Kevin. All righty. <laughs> Mark, Mark Praise 9, the Lord. Amen. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death, till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Amen. Matthew 16, 28. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death, till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Luke Amen. 9, 27. But I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death, till they see the kingdom of God. Matthew 24, 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Amen. Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Mm -hmm. Luke 22, 19. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Amen. Praise the Lord. We know that without God, there is no power. But with him and through him, there is power. Amen. And if we really realize and take it to heart, power comes from God. Amen. And that's the reason why we have to trust in him and believe in him and give our problems to him. So many of us have the habit of giving God things, laying it on the altar and going right back and pick it up and try to work it out on our own. But if we turn it over to the Lord, he has the power to do everything and do it right. Amen. And when we pick it up, it takes the Lord longer to work it out and to fix it for us. And the first thing we ask the Lord, why? Why is this and why is that? And the answer he going to give you simply because when you laid it on the altar, you should have left it there. Yeah. But besides leaving it there, you took it up and tried to work it out on your own. So that's going to take me a little bit longer to work the problem out that you gave me on, from the beginning. Yeah. So if I have a problem, I have to give it to the Lord. Yes, amen. I have to lay it on the altar and leave it there because he is coming back with the power in his hands. Yes, amen. And that's the reason why we, as a song says, power, power, we need more power. We need more power from the Lord. Yes, that's the reason why we have to fall down on our knees at the altar and call on him. Early in the morning, in the middle of the day, late in the evening, in the midnight hour, we can always call on him. Because his telephone is never busy. Yes, but when we call on our relatives and our friends, their line is busy, but God's line is never busy. Amen. That's the reason why we can call him up and tell him what we want or what we need. But he knows our thoughts before we think them. He knows what we're going to say before we say it. He knows our heart. He knows everything about us because he created us. Yes. We didn't create us. God created us. He created us from
from the dust of the earth. Yes, amen. And when he done that, he created he them, male and female. And when you really think about it, Adam and Eve said, and when he hid and covered themselves with fig leaves. But before they done that, God would come down late in the evening and walk and talk with them in the garden. But that evening when he came down, he was looking for them and they were hiding yeah. from the Lord. Come on. They thought they were hiding. But you can't hide from God. You can hide from mankind, but you can't hide from God. Because he's going to see where you are. He knows where you are. Before you even go to your hiding spot and says, I'm going to hide here from the Lord. You can't hide from the Lord. No matter how you care, you can't hide from him. Kevin put uh, Matthew 25 and 31 up there and Luke 22. Please. Okay. When the son of man shall come in his glory. God is going to come in his glory. And when he come in his glory, he says that all the heavenly angels with him, they shall, then shall he set upon the throne of his glory. Thank you, Lord. And when he sets upon the throne of his glory, and the angels come with him, when he comes down, He's coming down looking for a church without any spot, wrinkle, or any such blemish. Yeah, come on. And if we want to live for the Lord and do His work, we want to be that church that without a spot of any such blemish, yeah, that we might make it into the kingdom of God. But if we have spot and blemish, we're going to be left behind. I want to be one of the ones, you want to be one of the ones that he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the kingdom of God. We don't want him to say all your work was in vain. So you're going to be left behind. I want to make it into God's kingdom. If I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Amen. Now that's the Lord. When he was sacrificing himself for the death on the cross, he prepared the last supper. Yes, amen. So everybody had the opportunity to eat of the bread and drink of the vine, yes. which is juice. A lot of people think it's alcohol, but it's juice. The vine of juice is the Lord God Almighty. Yes, we are the vine that the Lord has put in place to serve him, to glorify him, to call upon him, to give him the glory. Yes, amen. Because if we don't give him the glory, nobody else going to do it for us. And if you can, you do it early in the morning, in the midnight hours, and in the midday. You find your secret place, and you go to it, and you call on the Lord. Yes, amen. And when you call on him, you're talking to him and nobody else. And if you pray secretly, God knows what you're talking about, but the devil don't. But the devil hear your prayer, the first thing he's going to try to do is hinder. 
And he's got a bad habit of trying to hinder what God is going to do. That was one prayed. And the prayer went up. And the devil hindered it. But God sent an angel down to let him know I have heard their prayers and their supplications. But there was yes. a catch in the midst. Mm -hmm. Come on. But I am answering your prayer that you prayed unto me. We pray for healing. God is going to heal you. Yes. We pray for jobs. God will provide. We pray for homes and automobiles. God will provide in his own time. Yes. Amen. We think we can just have it and just walk out there and get what we want. Not until, until God say so. If God don't say so, then we have to wait on him. And so when we wait on the Lord, he don't come when we want him, but he's always right on time. He's an on time God. So all the power is in his hand. When you need something, and sometimes you might call your sister, brother, your auntie, your uncle, grandma, or grandpa, to get what you was asking for, what you was thinking about, they may not have it. And the only thing you forgot to do was give it to the Lord. Ask the Lord. The Lord comes first in everything that we do or say. He comes first. Without him, we can't do nothing. Through him, all things are possible because we trust in him. We believe in him. And we know within our heart what God can and won't do. You look at brother sitting here. He's got a brace on, but God is going to heal the body in his own sweet time. In his own sweet time. You look at sister sitting over on the other side there. Had surgery. Heart problem. But God cured that. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. You look at us one by one, person by person. There is something that went on with our body that God healed and took care of. Yes, amen. Look at Brother Ray. Pacemakers yes. put in. Yes. Something went wrong. Had to go and redo what they done the first time. But God is in the plan of everything that has to be done. Yes, amen. He went back again and they was talking about having to have to do surgery again. But God said no. Amen. God said no. No more surgery. Yes. Amen. I'll take care of the rest. Yes. What man can do, God can. Amen. And when he heals your body, it's totally healed. Amen. Yes, amen. And you don't have to worry about it no more. Thank you. But when you start worrying and worrying and worrying and worrying, then it takes the Lord longer to work out your problems than it would have if you had just gave it to him and left it there. Mm. Yeah. That's the reason why when I turn it over to the Lord, I leave it there. I don't worry about it no more. Yes, amen. And you think about me, when I was younger, I used to be a worry one. I used to worry about everything. <laughs> but when I surrendered myself unto the Lord and found out that when I give it to him, I don't have to worry about it no more because he's going to take problem, he's going to take it over, and he's going to work it out. And one of them, four boys raised them five years by myself before I remarried. I went house hunting. Got to go find me a place because I'm tired of this apartment and I'm tired of these kids lying on my kids trying to get them in trouble. Yeah. I went and looked it. Did I find anything? No, I didn't. 
And I said, all right, Lord, I'm tired of running, I'm tired of looking. I said, okay, it's in your hands. You work it out. You know the needs. Come on. You know the desires. Put it in the Lord's hands and left it there and went on by my business doing other stuff I had to do. Within three weeks, the landlord where I live came over to the apartment and says, were you looking for a house with a backyard and a front yard? I says, yeah. He says, go to the Sitch and Sitcher neighborhood, the Sitch and Sitcher street, and the house is in the 3900. He says, I don't know the last two numbers. He says, but when you get there, look for a great big blue dumpster sitting in the front yard. I says, okay. So I hops in the vehicle and I comes over in Del Paso Heights, over this area. Went on the street he was telling me about, and when I turned the corner, there said a great big blue dumpster in the yard. And I says, okay. So I went and looked it over and everything. And I says, okay, Lord, you worked it out. So I went back and told him, I says, when it's completed, it's mine, I want it. And when it was completed, I moved in. Thank you, Lord. Right. And can't nobody do that but God. Yes. Nobody but him. And when you turn it all over to the Lord, he will work it out. Come on. He'll work it out. Yes. Amen. We can't work out nothing for each other, but God can. Amen. And he can work it out a whole lot better Amen. than my mom, dad, sister, brother, any your uncle can. Thank you, Lord. And when he work it out, it's done according to his will and his way. That's the reason why when we turn things over to the Lord, we have to turn it over there and just leave it there and not go pick it up and try to fix it. Because yeah. when we try to fix it, we make a bigger mess out of it than it was from the get-go. Yes. Yeah. So that's the reason why the power of the Lord is at hand already. Yes, Lord. That's the reason why the angels from heaven watches over us day and night. Thank you, Jesus. He has a guardian angels that watches over us day and night all the time. And a lot of times we think, well, I I, 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 I wonder where the Lord is today. Uh, I, I, I need this and I, I want this. But you don't realize, and if you really think about it, he's in front of you. He's on your left side. He's on your right side. He's behind you. He's in the heart. Yes, amen. And when you have the Lord there, you don't have to worry about nothing. You can trust in it. You can believe in it. And you can turn it over to the Lord and he'll work it out. Yes, amen. He'll work it out a lot faster than we can. Yes. And a lot sooner than we can. Amen. That's the reason why we have to trust in him. Yes, amen. Thank because he has the power for all things, through God Almighty, power is in His hands. Yeah. And there's an old song that used to sing, says, power, power, we need more power, Lord. And we do. In this day and time, we need more power yeah. to sing His praises, to pray a prayer unto Him, to preach His word, to teach His word. We need the power from God in order to do so. Amen. If we don't have the power from God, we can't deliver his word according to his will and his way. Mm -hmm. Come on. Can't nobody do that but God. Amen. Because he's there when nobody else can be there. He's with us all day long. Yes. All night long. Yes. And a lot of people wonder why I say I am blessed. Simply because God is in charge. Some woke up this morning and couldn't get up. Some didn't wake up at all. But when God wake you up, activities of your limbs, able to go and do your odds and ends, your chores that you want to do, you no 
know that you are blessed. Because he woke you up and started you on your way. If he didn't wake you up, you'd never wake up. And because of him, we live. Through him, all things is possible. That's the reason why you can thank the Lord for another day that he has made. And all that is within him. Because he has all power in his hand. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise God. To walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, walk with me, Lord. 